What younger players in the league reached out to you that it caught you off guard? Kyrie, if there was ever footage of me and him going at it, oh my God, it was crazy. Who won? What is up? What is good? How you living? How you feeling? How you doing? It is the big podcast with Shaq where we always do it. Big. Hey, we finally got it. And today I am proud to introduce from Seattle, Washington, a man that played for two decades on nine teams with three six man of the year trophies. No one has more four point plays in NBA history. No one has a bag of moves like him. Shaq said timeout. Oh, you played longer than me? Yeah, Shaq. Hell no. Our teammate from TNT, would you ever think, Jamal Crawford. Hold on, you played you play longer than me? I did. And you got more 50-point games more 50 than me? Point games. You got more rings and points and everything else, though. More money, everything. He was always on my list. Of? Dudes you don't touch up? Leave him alone. You told me that, Shaq. It's Leave a vaunted list. To you, it's Allen Iverson, it's Vince Carter, and That's White great. Chocolate. And White Chocolate. People Shaq. he liked to watch. When I first saw Shaq, of course everybody knows about Shaq, but when you see him in person, and he was last, this is like the vaunted Lakers, and he's last. And he oh, you're talking out. about like coming out to coming start out the game. To, to start the game. And they start playing the Undertaker music. Dum, dum, da, dum, dum, just walk into the music. How old were you? 19, and I, I can't stop looking at him. I keep looking. I'm like, this is the... Yeah, but that's not the first time I met you. When was the first time we met? You and a couple of guys were standing outside in LA, oh, yeah, and y'all couldn't yeah, get in. That's true. That's a fact. And they couldn't get in. That's and I walked fact. out, and I was like, let him in. They're like, Shaq, I was like, what I say? Let him in, and they let him in. That's a fact. That's a uh, true story. Never I knew who he was. I knew who he was. I'm a, I'm, I'm, I'm a fan. Like, I, I had a couple of so-called defense players on my team, but they always relied on me. Like you know, up, you know, they would they would do the fake pressure and then try to bring them so I could block the shot. But I'm like, no, 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 no. Three guys that when they come into town, I'm not helping at all. Mm. Him, Vince Carter, T Mac was on that list too. And AI, oh, they used, but they used to be so man. You got to show them something. Like no, guard them. You talking all this in the locker room, but you can guard them, guard them. So I just used to. And then like you know, sometimes in the game, I wonder if this is point shade or not. Like we make eye contact and I go, and I just be like, hey, Jamal, go. yes, <laughs> all the time, I just go. Like, hey man, go to work. I mean, I got a free, I got a free pass. Yeah, I got, yeah, I got a free pass. You noticed on. that? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I told you, I, I couldn't stop looking at him. So, is this now? You have me like on a whole nother thing. Like, so are there times where like there's a battle that's happening on the court, and everyone's like, let's just get the hell out of the way and let these dudes. That's the game within other. the game. Mm. Those happen all the time. You don't hear about it. No, you know, it's it's like unspoken. You know what I'm saying? How? How could I figure it out? Like, if I'm watching a game, like, what are the things to look for to see if that's starting to bloom? You'll never be able to figure it out. You just know you got two intense players going at each other. Now, like... Like Wemby and Chet, like, that felt different. That's a game within a game. Gotcha. Okay, but when you promote that, that's what, that's what I want to see as a fan. Like, if it's Wemby versus Chet, don't send no double. Chet, you guard Wemby, you guard and Wemby, him. you guard him. Yeah. So, you know, they be like, oh, show on the screen, you got a trap. No, nah, I ain't doing none of that. Get over you got him. Mm. You got him. Man, I can't. Uh, uh, to say it again, you can't guard him. And especially in our era, to his point, you used to have to guard your matchup. There wasn't no running. There wasn't no hiding. There wasn't no, okay, if a pick comes, you switch it. Like he said, you're going to get over, you're going to get through that. Mm. Period. There's no if, ands, or buts. So you had to take that matchup. Um, I'll ask this one first. Was there anyone, because your bag is ridiculous, was there anybody that you were like, oh, that's actually kind of a tough cover? Oh, Iverson? No, 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 no. Guarding you. Oh, guard me, Tony Allen. Mm. Because he didn't, give, he didn't give a about scoring. Him scoring was getting a stop. So he took pride in that. that so was, he was never expending any energy period. on it. None on offense. It was all defense. And 
the thing about it is every defender has a weakness. You just got to figure it out. And I had to, it took me time and time like, oh, okay. As good as he is on the ball, he starts ball watching if you get the ball up. So I would pass and just stand, stand, move. And he would still be looking at the ball, I'd be over there. So I, I figured that out about him. That was, that's how I started getting more points because he was so good, like when he was actually guarding me. Just, he would be under people. Yes. What up, y'all? Whether I'm doing the big podcast, hanging with the family, or covering the big game on TNT, you can't be at your best if you're not wearing clothing that feels great. American Giant. They make clothing that fits into your life. An impressive selection to choose from. When I'm at home, it's the crew t-shirt. It is comfortable. It is fashionable. It's perfect. So as the seasons change and the weather heats up, it's the perfect time to find a closet staple for every part of your spring days at American-Giant.com. Get 20% off your first order when you use code BIG at checkout. 20% off your first order at American-Giant.com. Promo code BIG. Growing up in Louisiana, well, not growing up, but going to college in Louisiana, I seen the Pistol Pete tapes where he used to, his dad used to drive and he'd be dribbling Dribble out the car. Like he doing all these drills. So ask White Chocolate what he used to do. He used to put weights on his on his hands and dribble. Were there any special techniques that you use? Because like like you said, you have a bag. So give me give me some techniques for the kids that's watching stuff that that you used to do. So you in Louisiana, I'm in Seattle, and it rains a lot. In the rain, I'm outside. You know how they'd be like, oh man, if you don't work on your game, there's somebody out there in the country outside right now. It was me. And in Seattle, that's why I dribble so I've never done a cone drill in my life. But the rain, the snow, I'm, I'm learning how to dribble in the rain and the snow. So I'm like, if I can control the ball in this, in these conditions, it's easy when I get in the court. So that was the, the best training method I ever had was dribble in the rain. Because the ball gets slippery, it gets slick, and you're still trying the same moves. And you don't have total control of it, but you learn to how to how to control different things, flow, pace. That's the most Seattle I've ever heard of in yes. my entire life. Yeah. I was in the rain. I was. I was. I, I got, see the way that you parent JJ, and I see the way that like you teach. And I'm curious who taught you. Cause it sometimes it sounds like you're self-taught, like you're out there on the court. But then I also know that you probably had like amazing teachers that like instilled like how much was just you and how much was somebody else? It was both, but I was like, even now, like I've always paid homage to OGs, but what I learned about myself is I love being around older people. I love knowledge, I love wisdom, I love to learn. You know what I'm saying? So I used to always be the dude that would go skip class sometimes and go in the barbershop and just listen to the old guys talk. And I got some knowledge from them. So my whole community, if you ask anybody about me when I was a kid, they'd be like, oh, he had some candy in one hand and a ball in another. That was me. Like I, I, to a T, I always had a basketball with me. I used to sleep with my basketball. Literally, I'm sleeping here, the ball's right here. Mm. Every car owned right now, I got a ball in it. So I've just always, <clears throat> it became one with me. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like I just, when you walk, you're not thinking left foot, right foot, you're just walking. When I'm dribbling, I'm never thinking about it's it. It's like breathing. It's breathing. I can lose the ball and it put me into another move. So, not thinking about it. When I did my two crossovers, I thought about it before I did it. Yeah. Your see. moves, like the moves that you did, like the one you just posted, did you actually think about that before no. you did? Did you say, okay, I'm coming down, I'm gonna I'm give it to him this way and then throw it behind the back. Nah. Like you just, and real? you can respect this because you know how you rap. I just freestyle. Seriously? Yeah, I, if I was a boxer, I'd be a counter puncher. All you right, so how you twice, know? I'm do it three times. Okay, so how you know to bring your hand in? Like, like that move you did, I would have to say, okay, I'm gonna go this way, throw it behind the back, and if he come, I'm gonna do it again and then shoot the jump. Like, like, I would like have to, shack. I'd be the like, way I set it up, you've never even seen me do it. Yeah, I never seen you do that. You know what I'm saying? Like you never seen me do. It. I'm just thinking this on the on the fly. The move on Kirk Heinrich, I'm literally coming down the court. Is that the around the back one? This one I went over his oh, head. Oh, you went over his head, yeah. And I'm thinking, like, damn, we played. I'm thinking this from when I got the ball. Okay, we played together. He knows behind the back. What am I gonna do? Boom, and it just happens. That's why you never seen it again. I've never practiced it. But I just feel like with a ball, I can do anything. Cause I like you said, I've kind of mastered that's my flow. Mm -hmm. I've mastered my flow of of randomness and being, you know, instinctual. All right, so we, uh, our best buddy is the general. Don't we yep. love the general? Yes, we do. We love the general. Uh, we need to break up a roster, okay? And so which player from that team could benefit the most from a clean break and joining another squad? And I've been given two teams. All right, let's do it. The Golden State Warriors okay. and the LA Lakers. Okay. Is it who needs to be set free? So we're going to break up the current roster who, which team could benefit the most from breaking up the roster, the Lakers or the Warriors? I will, I'm going to choose Lakers because Golden State have been there and done that. 
And I don't want to say they're over, but LeBron is trying to add some more to his legacy, so I'm going to help him out. Got to get rid of Reeves. Give me a, another guy that can do that, but a guy that's a little more consistent. I'm not saying Reeves is inconsistent, but when you're playing and win for a championship, you can have no inconsistency. I can remember maybe one or two games that my big shot Bob or my Brian Shaw was off, but when I needed them, they were already there. So I'm getting rid of him. I like the young cat who dunked on um, Wimby, the tall cat. He's cool. The kid from Golden State, yeah, yeah Trace yeah, Jackson yeah, Davis. I like Trace Jackson, but he's an older rookie. I'm gonna use Reeves because Reeves is a talent. I'm gonna get me one more veteran, and I got to get three or four shooters. I got to get three or four bona fide knockdown shooters, and I got to combine get, those two rosters. Yes. You'd have a really yeah. nice team. And I got to get a, a Jamal Crawford, a guy that can come off the bench and just give me buckets. Karis LeVert type. Yes, yes. No, nah, Karis LeVert is too up and down. Like, you got to understand, when you win the championships, there is no up and down. Like, when I'm... 18 a game. When I'm in the playoffs, forget my free throw percentage. I got to average 40. Not 35, not 32. I got to average 40. If I don't average 40, we don't win. And the one game I didn't average 40 in Indiana, I had like 29-something. Kobe looked at me and said, I got it. That's when you fouled out. Yeah. And he looked at me and was like, I got it. If but you're no, breaking up, breaking up Lakers and Warriors, who? Lakers. I'm with Shaq. They don't have enough to even compete right now. And my thing is, if LeBron's still your best player at this point, mm. I'm looking at trading Anthony Davis. Wow. I don't know. I'm not trading Anthony. I'm just telling you, you can get four or five pieces to go with him that fit LeBron. If LeBron's still going to be the best player, I can't trade Anthony. But I, really, if I can get a Kyrie Irving type, they need another wing, a dominant wing score. If they can get like a Kyrie Irving type who can just take over his quarters and mm. be that Kobe to Shaq when stuff's in trouble, I got to take it over. Mm. That's what LeBron needs. Well, real quick, this AD thing. So you're saying you'd move him for pieces. You're saying absolutely not. No, because you need you definitely need a one-two punch. Like historically, one-two or one-two-three as well. So I know, I know if you like when I challenge AD. He don't call me. He don't say nothing. He steps up to yeah, drop forty and twenty. He's a dog. No, it's not his talent. It's yeah. just the fact that roster construction. Roster construction. So it's him and LeBron as I want two points. I need two shooters. I need a rebounder. Look, look what the one two punch has got. No, yeah, that's true. An in season tournament but, banner. No, but no, but okay. So even that, let's go to the in season tournament. I was there. The others played. They were great. Austin Reed had Cam the flu Reddish game. was balling. He had the flu game. He had the Michael Jordan flu game. He had thirty some points. So, but they, you have to do that all the time. Consistency. Who are you who are you breaking up? Of those two teams? Those, the same two you asked us about. Yeah, those two teams. So what I'm looking at is who is the star player that needs new pieces? For the Warriors, we know that it's Steph. For the Lakers, it is the question, are you building around LeBron or are you building around AD? I know we have a lot of LeBron sexuals in the media. There was a fight recently between... You mean about who loves him more and who, who loves, loves him more. But like, That's what that means. Like I, When I saw the word, I was like, what the hell does that even mean? Got it. You just thought it was people that maybe had sex with LeBron? I, I don't know what I thought. What was your oh. thoughts on that, though, Shaq? What? When you saw that. Oh, you're talking about with uh, Shannon and... Uh, what's Shannon that? and Kendrick uh, Who knew Perkins. him, who loved him longer in the train and... Shan Shannon loves him from LeBron. LeBron could do no wrong with Shannon. And that, that, that's fine. That's understandable. I, I mean, listen, you, we all we all got our guys. Dr. J is my guy. Yeah. Iverson's my guy. Who's your guy? Jordan. Michael Jordan. Yeah. Um, but my thing would be, I know that... Like what you said there, I thought was very poignant. If LeBron's still your number one... That's really your problem. That's and if people start arguing about how good LeBron is, but if you look back at the what playoffs saying, last year, if you look back at the playoffs, LeBron will win you game one, and he's not going to be a big part of game two. But that's okay. That's and he's why gonna you need the others to step up. Totally get it. Yeah, that's I think more it's others, though. But he's 39. I don't care. He's still giving 20 points. Totally. Six, Let's six. talk analytics. You do 20, AD 30, that's 50. There we go. That Can you trust AD to do 30? All the time. That's what I'm saying. He has to. I seen him do it when he was with uh, uh, the Pelicans. Oh, Remember that? Now. He did it when, when I know, but still. So you got to do it. Yeah. I don't know. I want LeBron to enter his Andre Iguodala era. You talking I, about? You talking about Stephanie? Other pieces? No. Clay needs to step up. Clay needs to be Clay. The episode of Big Podcast with Shaq is brought to you by The General. And you know Shaq loves The General. Before the league and all my championship rings, The General was there for me when I needed them the most. 
They gave me my big break on insurance. The Journal has been offering quality coverage for 60 years with low rates and flexible options to keep you covered. If you're ready for your big break, you know what to do. Visit thegeneral.com today to get a quote. That's thegeneral.com to get a quote today. And it wouldn't be the big podcast without the general. Old heads always talk about the younger generations not being tough or maybe not wanting it as much. You're talking about like being on the court in the rain in Seattle. Yeah. You recently had a post that went very viral talking about and issues true. in AAU basketball. And it's freaking that true. Parents are overbearing. You got you got to teach these kids toughness and all that stuff. Will we ever get the kid on in the in the rain in Seattle training by himself, or has it gotten to a point now where everything is content and everything is team play? I think we'll get there, but it's going to be OGs that set that foundation for them to get there. Like even JJ, you brought him up. He's very blessed. Like we have a court at the house. When I was looking at my court, I'm looking at Shaq's. Shaq, how you do it? What did you do? Like I'm watching everything, right? So he's comfortable in that situation, but I got to make it uncomfortable for him in other situations. So he understands that this isn't, it ain't sweet. You got to do it. And so for me, I'm probably hard on him. And you have a cheat code. Like, I did it. Yeah. You know, I, can t- I can give you the blueprint of how to do it. And sometimes I know I'm just dad, but I, I, I have a blueprint to how you can do it. So you have a cheat code. Same with Shaq. That message <clears throat> you're talking about, me and Shaq talked about that. He's like, man, I was coaching my son in Bo Bo and these parents. And I'm like, damn, this is, a, this is really an epidemic. This has been going on forever. This is Shaq. Mm. And the problem is, is they see this through their children. Yes. And you have to let... Living through them. You have to let, like, it's... Oh, like, they're, they're looking at their children as they're going to give them the lifestyle they've always wanted. Exactly. And so, and it, and it happens when the child goes viral. That's the first. Yep. Ah. Yeah. Second, these rankings. Ah. Like, I had a guy who told me, my, my, my son is, is the number one fifth grade, and I'm like... <laughs> I'm like, bro. Okay, and... He, he should be, I said, no, you should let him be a kid. What do you mean? I said, bro, sixth grade, eight, seventh grade. Like, bro, this, this, see how it pans out. Right. What you should do is always encourage him. Don't, you know, under camps and that. So, again, these parents, these rankings, these, these going virals, and then these these AAU coaches that got deals with these big programs and, you know, they're, you know, they're promising them stuff. And then the, the, the killer, the NIL. That's a whole different piece. That's a whole. It's now. just, it's just, it's just killing the game. I, uh, I, I, I spoke at LSU the other day, and they said, "What do you think about NIL?" I said, "Well, I, I can see both sides. For me, college was a place of higher learning. Nobody in my family had ever graduated. My parents said, you 'You're going to graduate.' And I'm you thinking about a fraternity. Yes, you got to be on a team. That. So I wasn't even thinking about money. And then, you know." <clears throat> I had this conversation with, with Sharif. He said, hey, man, they want to offer me a shoe deal. I was like, son, your father owns two very wealthy shoe companies. Like, you're gonna, you want to come do this? You want to come? Like, it, do what you like, but, you know, know, know who you are. Know, yeah. like, you want to you wanna get the, the, the less money now? Like, me, if I was in college, if we're going to do a deal, we're going to do a deal. Okay, uh, Reebok, you want to sign me? I want 50 for 10 right now. Don't give me no 100000 that 100000 Because my dad told me something one time, it kind of me up. My sophomore year was like, we can go on pro. He's like, nope. And I said, why? He said, bro, we've been broke for 17 years. We can be broke for 18 years. Year. 300 days. And then, and so now, in those 300 days, because when I came out my sophomore year, my mother, after me and my father argued, my mom said, come on. Because me and him was about to go to blows. his first time. And he, he like, he's like, you stand up to me. I like, but you're not going pro. I was like, I'm going pro. That my mom was like, "Come on, cause y'all, cause y'all gonna start fighting." And my mom said, "Balance a checkbook," and I couldn't. I couldn't balance. A that check. was it right there. Yeah. Damn. And she said, "Baby, you, you, she said, listen, you can do what you want to do, but you're not ready." So now my junior year, when my dad said we've been broke for eighteen, I was like, "Okay." And these next three hundred days, I'm gonna learn a little bit about business. So I took accounting. I took all my mark. I took all. That. So my junior year, when I came, when she said, "Balance that checkbook," my <laughs> was pretty to the ah <laughs> my. Zero is plus one ten. Yeah, fifteen percent from. Oh my! She's like, okay, you're ready. So, well, so now you're bringing up something else, which is parenting a child after you've achieved a dream, and then they have a dream. 
That sounds really hard. Like, how has it been for you guys? You just have to be real. Like I told my boys, I said, hey, it's only two people that have accomplished what you're trying to accomplish. It's more now, but I, 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 I would say three now. Grand Hill grew up like you grew up. Kobe grew up like you grew up. And Steph Curry grew up like you grew up. Gotcha. But the difference between them and Pat us Mahomes. and Pat Mahomes, but the difference between us and them is them overwork. They overwork. So with that with that name on the back, you're going to have to overwork. Yep. But the good thing about me, I never wanted any of my kids to play basketball. I don't. If, if you want to play cool, if you don't, find me. I want them to be, like I got, I got seven children. I wouldn't mind veterinarian, doctor, a music exec, you know, makeup line. Like I want to, you know, I want to be able to, so that, that's why I, I, I put it out to the world. Before you get some of this cheese, you need two degrees. Yeah. And like I tell them now, because they're starting to get old, I say, you want to get a business and you want me to fund it, write it down. What do you mean write it down? I say, bro, business plan. Yeah, that's the version of yeah. your mom saying yeah. balance the check. Yes, hey, business plan. But So I have, look, man, I got seven. I don't like using this word. I ain't never had no problems with none of my babies. So yeah. I'm, I'm blessed. And for me, it's dope because he's obsessed with it. Like he really wants this on his own. We, I have a video, he's never even seen this. This is gonna be the first time he hears it. I have a video of him. My wife put like a court in his room, like a little court. And it had Damn, a- Damn, your house that big? No, nah, it ain't nothing. It's a little, no, nah. the old Dr. J court. It's yeah, a little court. I had the Dr. J. Right, it's a little school. hoop. What yeah. you mean court? What? D dude, it was court. a- <clears throat> Yeah, but he's, okay, it's like six, it's like the size of this table yes. probably. And, and But she made okay, it, she it was made like it a play school like, hoop. Yes, and she made a sport okay. court. For the flooring. You got a sport court in your side? Let's stop that. <laughs> so look, <laughs> he's on there. He broke the rim. I have video. I'm going to show it to you. He, he's on there playing basketball with no hoop. He on some nuts. I'm like, oh, right. Right. this is why we built in the gym, mm -hmm. right? Because then COVID hits and everything else. But he's obsessed with it. 12 o'clock at night, New Year's, he's in the gym. He's obsessed with being good and being great. And that's so what's dope about it. I see him at the top of lists. How do you not let that ego creep in? We told, I told him before, I said, I don't care if you're ranked one or 1,000. Tunnel vision. We're not worried about us. Let's kid. We're not worried about that. You're going to have haters. You're going to have people that love you. And you're going to have everything in between. We're on a mission. And if you're on this mission, then let's go. But you got to have tunnel vision. And so for him, he's locked in. And to his credit, he doesn't get caught up in that. And I'm, I'm thankful had, for that. I had a serious proud dad moment the other day. My son made the dean's list at Texas mm. Southern. Congrats. Yeah, yeah, Shakir, my twin, like that. Like, I've, as a dad, I felt something like. You was more proud of that than any yeah, bucket he's ever I'm more proud of that, because you know me, I'm thinking I could put him with this company. He, like, you, I'm, I'm already. The COO yeah, opening? Yeah, that, that, sure. that's what, like, yeah, I'm already, like, he can run the rebound, he can run yeah. the shad. Like, for, like, I'm already thinking, like, it, it was a great moment. That is awesome. What did you think of Jamal when he first joined us on Tuesday nights? As a TV person. I knew he was good. That's why certain people had to go upstairs and said, make sure he's here or I'm not going to be here. Yeah, like every time we yeah. would do the show with Jamal when he would fill in if like Candace was out or whatever, we'd always be like, man, that was fun. Because you got to understand. Crazy. I didn't know that. Because you got to understand. Like it's a lot I mean, of. I talked a lot of behind your back. But yeah, of course. Shaq did. vouched for me. Of course. You did. <laughs> it's a lot of people talking now on podcasts and all this. But if I'm listening, I want somebody that's been there and done that. I've seen him in the trenches. I know who he is. So as a fan, if you know basketball, you know who he is. So I think that's what makes our show work because, you know, even though we're silly and we do all that stuff, G14 classification. Yeah. I'm on the top floor. Yeah. He's in the building. You know what I'm saying? Like he, from, from a He's guard, on the top floor, floor in terms of like if we're talking no, no, no. guard handles and stuff like that. Yes. Like, but overall, he's yeah. the top of the top. I'm in the building. That's he's in the building. So he's in the building. Can you, like, so I, I, I'm I the Walmart right. greeter outside. Welcome to Shaq's building. Yeah. <laughs> Would you no, like to you, see Jamal? No, but you, no, but you, you and Ernie and Matt, you guys have ad administrative access because I got it. Because if Our you see how he's work. putting it together, yeah, that's a business a, be, right there. Did you know why? Because when it comes to communications and you know how this thing what was always built, in order to be this, you have to have a communication degree. You guys did that. Yes. So you're in the building. You don't you don't get the weapons that we get, but you're we in the building. We have a hall in the, you know uh, we have a sense. wing in the Hall of Fame. Yes, you do. Well, how has it been doing TV now that you've been doing it for like, I don't think I've asked you this in a while. He's still it. mad at me. 
Because he pranked him? I didn't prank him. I said a million dollars. No, I want my money. Oh. No, I, I gave you your no, money. No, no, Bro, I said a million dollars. Yeah, I've heard of Starbucks. Nah. I nah. want all about the Benjamins. I want some real Benjamins. I, well, you gave Benjamin O'Neal. You didn't, you, didn't, you didn't read the fine print. I just said you were there. No, first I didn't hear the fine print. No, but I said I bet you a million dollars. Yeah, but I said a thousand. Then you went ten thousand. Then you went big boy million. Then you give me the shack bucks. Yeah, but that was a million dollars. I don't even work in, in, in Big's uh, chicken. Yeah, you're right. Big chicken. <laughs> Big's chicken. Oh, well, that's an idea. Big's Thank you. chicken? No, no, shack bucks. Thank you. Yeah. Come on. Yeah. Maybe I'll get some money off of that. Like a reward uh, yeah, you, clip yeah. thing. American soil. You order the shack bucks, uh, and then I sell it. No, I love it, it though. And then you, you like spend it. I love it. And, what and do you now, think of the world of TV and basketball and the people that talk about it? And I was about to ask Shaq that, like, how do we not get more people with, like, the G14 classification, but how do we clean some of this up? Because some of it's crazy. I think, and I want to say this, I think they get mad at us because you got the wrong people talking. Like, if you're not great, I don't want you speaking on my greatness. That's real. Period. So, you know, there's a lot of guys on TV. I'm gonna say comparing that. legacies. Oh, stuff. just, just, you know, like if you were a mediocre player, you can't talk about, like if a great player has a bad game, just say he has a bad game. Don't start talking about he's not this and that, like, because now it's unauthentic. Like me, I have G14 classification say, unless he's averaging 28, 15, I don't see him as a dominant big man. I can say that. You can say he did. Now, if I'm averaging six points, I can't say that. Can't say so it. that's the problem with fans that they have with some of these guys. Again, our show, I think you know that we're allowed to say some of you know the stuff we said, but other shows, and I think that's why people hate us commentators every now and then. But like when I and I've uh, exposed my secrets. If I talk about you, I like you. Reason why I'm talking about you because I get in player mode. I got to see the type of player you are. Like I already know I could come at him, and I already know what he's gonna do. Mm. Some guys, you you come at them, they shine away. They shine away, and you gotta leave them alone. Like all these people that I've tried to help as big men, I just try to help them. Like, and then if you can't take that criticism and turn it into motivation, you don't deserve to be in the building. Mm. Like all I said about young fellow was he need to average twenty eight and fifteen, and I don't know how to get to. He don't like me. I'm like that has nothing to do with. It. Like I'm telling you how to get to Superman status. Mm. Like, this is all you got to do every time. But I just, so I kind of had to leave him alone. I could, you know, kind of had to, you know, stay off him. But Did he ever reach out to you? No, I don't, bro. You, no, I mean, no, I mean no, before I don't, that, like, if. I don't need conversations. Like, I don't. No, but for him, Shaq. So I'm saying, like, if I'm trying to be one of the best guards and AI is willing to help me, if I reach out to him, Michael Jordan or whoever, did he ever reach out to you? Dwight's never reached out to no, you? No, but if I put the information out, you don't need to re re reach out. Like, excuse, uh, excuse me, Miss Camera Lady, take the picture here. We don't need to have a conversation because I put it out in the world. Right. You know? Right. And, you know, she could probably say, don't tell me how to take pictures. I've been doing that, and she could probably do all that, but we don't need to have that conversation because it's not a conversation thing. I'm like, I'm giving you free information. Right. Let me and and then sorry, and then when I did my special, I, I talked about it. I thought it was the rites of passage thing, because Kareem and Will did the same to me. I'm in a restaurant one time. True story. I'm here. Will's right there. The can't even speak to me. Right this close. Was it an event? Like what? No, were you guys? I'm just, no, I'm just at a restaurant. He was in there. Guy said, "Hey man, well, Mister, you know, Chamberlain is there." So I walk in front of his table. He looked at me like this, and I'm sitting just like this. He's sitting like that. He never looked, and I never looked. So instead of going, oh, Wilton Chan, I said, okay, I'm going to make this remember my name. Right. And then a couple of years later, I'm doing my thing in L.A., and we're getting swept. Because my mom always told me, if you can find truth in criticism, don't be acting like no little She told me that one day. I'm saying right? that? Yes. Mr. So, Seal. Yeah, so. I'm I'm putting up numbers, and they say, oh, uh, Mr. Kareem, Shaq is, you know, putting up num numbers way bigger than yours. And Kareem says, yeah, but he gets swept all the time. So is he really that great? That hurt me. I was like, but instead of all Kareem's hating, and uh, it's like, that's Kareem. So he put the information out. I don't, I don't, I don't want to go, oh, uh, Jerry West, get me Kareem's number. Like, he put it out there. He put it out there for the world. So now, Mr. Shaq, if you want to be bad, and that's all I try to do. So, like, you, you get all that, oh, yeah, bro, I'm 50 years old. I don't want no beef. I don't want no problems. We don't, 
We done, we done lived in L.A. when it was crazy. Yeah. We, we, we done went in the past. All, we done been in there. When I put out information, we're trying to help. If you don't like my help, just say you don't like my help, and I won't mention your name ever again. Take take yourself out. And I'll, I've never heard you say this, but I just saw, it's funny you said Will. I saw where he threw like a fake jump ball with you and Pat Ewing. Yeah. Who's your Mount Rushmore bigs all time, not including yourself? Yeah, not including myself. Five or four? Four. Four. Mount Rushmore. You got to go with Mr. Russell. Uh, for uh, championships, mm -hmm. you got to go with Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. Yes, you got to go with Akeem Olajuwon because I couldn't mm. stop that. Mm. And you got to go with the other most dominant player ever, world champion. I wanted to pass him up in points so bad because I was going to arrogantly say, "I'm the most dominant big man ever. I don't want to hear nobody else." You name. was thinking about that when you played? Yes. No. When I start, you, you know, start passing, yeah. When I start passing people in point, like I know he had two championships. So if I get two, I'm in the conversation. But when I got three, and then I got four, yeah. and I was edging up to him in points, that's why I signed a two year deal in Boston. I need to average like ten points for two. Oh, you years. You already knew this. I already knew I need to average like ten points Ooh. for two years, and I was gonna pass him out because I was gonna have a press conference. I'm gonna be sued and booed and be like, I don't want to hear his name ever again. So now he they say can most talk dominant. To I have. Yeah, him, <laughs> him and me. I can live with that. But, you know, somebody asked me the other day, it's like, hey, man, uh, another guy wants to get his jersey retired and, and do it in, in Orlando and all that. And my father told me this a long time ago. Oh, my father told me this a long time ago. If it has to be discussion, then maybe you're not that great. All right, so Jamal just did this thing you know that I he said? does a lot. I heard it. I heard it. <laughs> yeah, but you're not going to ask what that means? No, we've done this discussion. Then I say a player's name like Alonzo Mourning, and you go, see? And then I say, and he goes, Kobe, do you have to say anything? But what the real thing here is, this is the second time Jamal's been on this podcast. And it's the second time where he turns into the interviewer. And it's this move that he does. Oh, my God. That, like, he doesn't answer quite. You see what he did to you? Yeah, no, I saw it. No, it's Shaq, like, don't, don't. It's me and so you against now, the world. No, 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 no. So now that. Jamal has to answer questions. You heard yeah, Pac, me and you job. against the world. Yeah, okay. Job, so ahead. you asked him about Mount Rushmore. Who's on your Mount Rushmore yeah. of ball handlers? Ooh. Not including ask yourself. ask a follow-up question. Not including yourself. Kyrie. Okay. Isaiah. Which Isaiah? Isaiah? Original. Original. Detroit Piston. White Chocolate. You better have to say White yeah, Chocolate. Yeah, White Chocolate. You're usually the fourth, so I'm curious who you put in this spot. Allen Iverson. Mm. I'm doing him four. No Tim Hardaway? Timmy was cold, but yeah, AI just cold. mesmerized. You asked Shaq, uh, and he told a story about Kareem insulting him, and it motivated. Have you ever been insulted, and it stuck with you for a very long time? Insulted? Or motivated, or someone critiqued you. Your you guys' is Gary Payton's story. I'm never yeah. told. My name's ringing in Seattle. I'm in high school. We see Gary Payton at the mall. He has Marty, Trev, all his boys, about 10 people. I'm in high school. I'm with his nephew and a friend of mine. We see him in the food court. It is packed. Gary Payton, it's the glove. It's after they went to the finals. And I didn't know this, that he had been hearing about me. So he goes down the line. He goes to my one friend. You terrible, I already played you. He points to his nephew. You ain't I already beat you. And he points to me. I've never said hello to him. You, you come see me because I'm hearing about all these moves and all these tricks that you're doing. This is what we going to do. The bigger the crowd, GP gets louder and louder. Shaq mm -hmm. knows this. Louder and louder. We're going to play one-on-one. -on -one. If you beat me, I'll give you a million dollars. A real million, not the Shaq million. I'll give you a million dollars. If I beat you, I want you to walk around naked in your neighborhood. I'm running around running my trucks. Because I hear about all you're doing. Let's ride. And he pointed like Denzel and Malcolm X. And when he went like this, all 15 people in the entourage went that way. I didn't back down. I'm like, all these people came through. Ah, they're screaming, going crazy before social media. That was my introduction to Gary Payton. So that, that was motivation. What happened? Did you play? We never played, but when I went through the draft a year later, I went and stayed with him in Oakland. And then he worked me out, and uh, that was dope. Just Man. the experience of GP, like a big brother. All right, you talked about how you, because you then asked Shaq all these questions, about how you like to Hold be on, around. Are you taking my questions and remixing them? Yes. yes. So you, this is my job. You can't stop the rain, too. Um, <laughs> you talk to old people. And you said, you know, why not reach out and get some gems? For sure. What is a gem that an OG vet gave to you that is buried in your chest? Michael Jordan, when I was working out with him in Chicago. And he said, 
a lot of people love what comes with the game, but don't actually love the game. And, and that stuck with me. Because the game, everything else comes from the game. You know what I'm saying? Like no matter what you do after that comes from what you provide on the court and what you bring. So that stuck with me forever. It's honestly why, okay, I'm going to say something and I hope this doesn't get clipped out, like whatever. That phrase, message, more than an athlete, which I think was important because it came at the foot of that shut up and dribble right. when that happened. And then it turned into more than an athlete. And then from that, I think athletes were like, oh, I'm not just an athlete. I'm also this, this, and this. Sure. But they also forgot that the you athlete this, part this, this, opens up everything. everything. You can do all of that, but like you have God-given ability. You've worked for 15 straight years to get to this point. Don't abandon it now and don't feel guilty. I feel like some athletes feel guilty about being an athlete. I knew Shaq for Shaq. I knew Shaq for that. I knew Shaq for the dominance on the court first. That was the introduction to Shaq. And then we learned he can do all these things at the highest level, but I knew him as a basketball player first. Yeah. Athletes ask me that question all the time. Like, how do you do all this? I said, first of all, you got to play and play. Got to be good. Well. Drop 30 and 15. And, and, and you got to win. That's, yeah. that's first of all. And you got to win all the time. Think about it. Jokic was this mystery guy. Now he's doing hotel commercials. We're seeing, because once you win, all that other comes with it. You also talked about why would a younger guy reach out? What younger players in the league reached out to you that it caught you off guard of their maturity and their willingness to learn? Because I know you have a bunch. Yeah. Um, Kyrie. He came and stayed with me in Seattle. He was last year in Boston, so probably three or four years ago. And we worked out every day for a month. But I was surprised to, to hear from him. And then what's crazy is he told me this story if he used to come watch me in Seattle when he was 11 years old in the Pro-Ams. And he'd be the kid dribbling and doing stuff in between timeouts. So you never know who's Bro, watching. Well, that was... Little kids, yeah. you're like, if I hit this shot, someone's watching. They're gonna think that I'm great. Yep. So wait, what was, was like everything? What was a typical day of Kyrie staying at your house? Like, what? How did we it... didn't stay at my house, but came and stayed in the city. Yeah, he has his own setup. But a typical day is we would meet at different gyms, University of Washington or Seattle Pacific, whatever. Work out. I make sure I had all the smoothies. All, all the vibe was right for everything. If he wanted to go work out, and not shoot that day or not work out that day, I have a gym set up for him. But he had family up there as well. He, how many he shots were we getting up? Oh, a bunch. We had, we had some. If there was ever footage of me and him going at it, oh, my God. It was crazy. Who won? He'd do a move. We actually, at the end of it, I think he won six wins. I had six. Yeah. Yeah, not one-on-one. -on -one. The one-on-one, -on -one, it was. So we need a game 13, then. Yeah. We did need game 13. Yeah. Got a court right here. Something else I've never said. I was supposed to be Uncle Drew. But what happened? I was supposed to be Uncle Drew. He what hit happened? me Uncle Drew with you. What happened? I just got traded to Minnesota. And Thibodeau, when we were going to shoot, Thibodeau had off-season workouts. I didn't want to be Hollywood coming from L.A. What's that mean, off-season workouts? You know, Thibodeau ain't got no off-switch. Like, they're doing training camp type workouts during <laughs> September, that area, August, September area when y'all were That's shooting. That's real? Because y'all were shooting. You shot in Atlanta, right? No, what I'm saying, they used to make y'all work out in the summer? Yeah, Tibbs. And I'm going to a new team. <laughs> and I'm like, Shaq. Shaq's like, summer workout, what's that? Yeah, once I leave, What I'm is out. that? Yeah. That's oh, when yeah. Shaq was growing his hair, jumping in pools. Yeah, remember that? Pools. Yeah. Right. Uh, somewhere. But no, nah, so I was supposed to be an Uncle Drew as well. That's uh, crazy. I have an idea that I'd like to pitch. You talked about Shaq walking out to the Undertaker theme. We see this in baseball when the closer comes out, they play music, and it's this big thing. If you're a Jamal Crawford, a sixth man of the year, should a six man of the year get an entrance song for when they come into the game? Yes. Yes. Like Shaq, what should, exist, the, song, what should think, the song be? What well, everyone no, you get your own. I know, but he's the one that thinks all six million ways to die. Choose one. <laughs> <laughs> we get that. We gotta play that. <laughs> that yeah, that one. Six million yeah, ways to die. Sure. Yeah, that one. That's that Cypress Hill. Yeah, no, that's. But wouldn't uh, it be cool if like the lights go off for a second? Now oh, entering they the took game. That line from Cypress. Yeah, they did. Yeah, yeah, they did. You said what? Now entering the game, two times, six man of the year. Bow, bow, six million bow, ways bow, to die. Bow, Choose one. Jack, all time cipher. If you had a birthday party, dead or alive, you could have any five rappers He's in history. He's turning into a host again. You could have any five rappers in history. Big, at your birthday party, big, dead or alive. Big Daddy Kane. Ooh. You know that Big Daddy Kane like comments on all of our posts. Big That's Daddy Kane. How does that make you feel? It makes me feel great. It's it makes me feel great, and I've never crazy. met Big Daddy Kane. Yeah, so Big Daddy Kane, Big Daddy Kane, 
Uh, He's never been asked this. I like it. Red man. Red man, red man. Red is yeah. ill. Five dog. Ooh. Biggie. You got one slot left. And Pac. Because I used to see Pac and Nipsey. And we always used to. You seen Pac wearing his jersey? No. I you never seen that? No. When was this? He wore it in the video. He wore it in the shoot. He got the all Orlando time. 32 on like, the I used to right. see him. I used to see him all the time at the, at the remember the uh, comedy store on Tuesday? On Sunset? Yeah. So I would always see him there, but like he'd, he'd be over and like I would always, like I wish I could have just shook his hand and Nipsey's hand. You never did? No. We'd like, we'd see him and, you know, respect. Because like my thing is when I see another superstar, I know how it is to be bothered. I don't want to bother him. You mm. know what I mean? So. That's like, why you leave me alone. Like, you know what? <laughs> like. For example, if I wouldn't have had you hook me up with Jason, I would have never tried to meet Taylor Swift. But because yeah. I had the hookup, but even when I met her, I said, this going to be three minutes. Hey, How did that go? We never talked about that. So I went the first time. This is at the Super Bowl. Her security said, uh, wait to halftime. So now I'm like, the shack just got big You know big how time. this goes. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> the shack just got big time. So I go. But the great thing, luckily, is. I don't know if the numbers are correct, but I was in 188 and she was in 192. So it was just a walk out, boom, boom, she's right there. So I didn't want to bother her during the game. So I went down there and the guy was like, I said, hey, uh, tell Jason Shaq I want, I want to see Taylor. Just It was just me me by myself. So a guy comes out, you got to wait to halftime. So now I'm like, so I go to halftime. Me, I shouldn't have did that. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So me and my partner, Jamie Salter, we go down. We take a picture, and I see her. Ice Spice is fine as f- by the way. She's she's really, focus. We'll get back to yeah. She's she's <laughs> she's she's really hot. So we'll just take a picture. And I just come, but she was nice, very nice. What did you guys talk about? Nothing. I, I asked. Did us, she go Shaq? Yes. How did that feel? Like I, he used to that now. I, no, I, I'm curious if I anyone's saw, ever been like. Who no, are you? I I saw it, and I don't know if it's true or not. Say I'm the third most recognizable face in the world. It's Pope. Barack than me. Stop. That, that is crazy. I saw it. I don't know how uh, how accurate it is. So I, I'm not like, like when people. I just don't know if Barack's ahead of you. Like when people see me, I don't. Like if I'm being I'm honest, but she, like the Pope, he's wearing a hat. It's a dead it's, giveaway. You take the hat off the Pope. Shaq's more famous than the Pope. I mean, but she was nice, and I, I just made it real quick. And then when I was, I asked. Her, I said, "Have we ever met before?" I said no. And then the reason why I put out the post with Ice Spice, not because I was trying to flirt, but. I didn't really blow her up, but I just wanted to show her some respect too. That's why I put the post out. Like because I was in there, it was all about, oh, Shaq met Taylor and she was in the picture. So I had to come back and say, Oh yeah, and by the way, this 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 little woman is fine too. Like, bro, you gotta understand the Shaq don't I don't flirt like that. My my, my Yeah, you slide in the DMs. My you know, <laughs> my flirting my flirting is unorthodox. Hold, hold on. Just cause I say hi don't mean I'm sliding in the in the DM. That's no, but I know that you slide. You know, you yeah. know he slides in the deal. No, I'm not. I'm just saying. So I, I, was, I was drinking with Chuck last night, and he goes, one, he goes, man, I can't believe Shaq got me with that OnlyFans. He's like, what is it? And I had to explain to him what OnlyFans was. And, and then I was talking to him, and I said, do you really still get called Shaq? He said, I get called Shaq 25 times a week. <laughs> he said, 25 times a week. <laughs> People come to me and go, oh, Shaq. And, and I was like, really? I go, be your Charles Barkley. He goes, no. everybody thinks I'm Shaq. No, Charles is not this good looking <laughs> at all. Do you ever get called, ever get mistaken? He got mistaken for George Foreman the other day, and he got really he upset. He looked like George Foreman. He does. Big head. Both of them got big heads. Did y'all think y'all be at the front, like mm. you and him especially, like of the whole movement for athletes going to TV and everything? Cause, yeah, I never thought about no. it like that. You know what I mean? Like, no. Because because when I came in, I wanted to be on the Brian Gumble, the professional tip. I did terrible in the first year. And shout out to TK. He pulled me down and said, said former producer Tim Kyle. He said, if you keep doing it, you ain't going to be working here long. And I said, what do you mean? He said, be who you are. I said, oh, you want that? And again, the reason why it works for us, because we realize if we're going, all the hardworking people in the world, we keep you up at 12, midnight, 1, 2, got to make it fun. Like if I if I watch a game it's not a good game, but I still want to watch Adam, Jamal, and Shaq, please make me laugh so I can go to bed happy. Like who wants to watch a game and then watch three guys talk about break down yeah, the yeah, break field down. goal percentage? Right, yeah, right, yeah. Right. Nobody wants to nobody wants to see that. 
But you guys, you you guys know when something's clicking, it feels good. It's magic. No, our, uh, it's magic. Hold on. We also won an Emmy. Did we win an Emmy one year? We've won an Emmy every year, yeah. but we don't oh, yeah. get any because we're talent. What do you mean? Who who made that rule? Yeah, I know. I, this, this is show. We yeah, won we last have. Year. Yeah, we have. We, but I'm just saying, y'all are like magic, bro. But this show that we created, we 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 good. Right. We're going to do some big things. Trust me on that. Um, <laughs> you're... Sprinkle me, man. Oh, yeah, we about Sprinkle to, me. I want to talk about, about real the, big. some NBA. I'm really. about to go in the office and be like, show me the money. <laughs> those real dollars, not those Shaq yeah. dollars. Um, if I go, my boys go with me. <laughs> when you... when you um, Don't get flustered. You have your, your finger on the pulse of all the young players in the NBA. Yeah. And the thing that fans don't see that you guys will see is you know who has the mentality and who has the work ethic and you talk to the coaching staffs and all of that if you were to buy stock in any young player right now let's say 25 years and under who is the first stock that you're buying well you got shot how old is sga under 25 yeah he's under uh, 25. so sga yeah so yep. that's that's one of your big stocks let's For go sure. back and forth okay all right and edwards Anthony Edwards. Tyrese Halliburton. Mm. Paulo Bencaro. Mm. The Wagner boys. Both Franz and Mo. I don't the know. Wagner boy, both both. Of the Wagner boys. I'm going to split the stock price. We're going <laughs> They've to already split. split. Yes, the you know, Wagner you know, boys. Who else is on that list? There's a lot. The fact a that lot. Luca Luka. hasn't been said. Luca. Luca. How old is Luca? Yeah, I'm Luka's thinking he's 25. Luca's 25. Oh, yeah. 25. Luka's 25. Yeah. Right. But can we say this like, we talk about these guys. What's underrated is Kevin Durant went to the finals at 23. Wow. He did? Yeah. With that As young the best thunder the against the Heat. 23 years old. That's right. I like, we that. see all the young players doing what they do. He went to the finals at 23. That. That's why I say with Luka, if Luka wins one, like this year, with the numbers he's putting up. Oh, they're insane. There will be a conversation to be had that will be bonkers. Not really. Why, why not really? Right now, he's the second best in Dallas Maverick history, only because of the championship. Now, if he wins one, you can put him in that conversation with Dirk. He ain't over here yet. He's still in Dallas. He's a great player, but he's in All right, Dallas. Let's have, I want to have this conversation. Who is, are the NFL, NBA players, no matter the age, that you would legitimately buy a ticket for to go watch because you find them entertaining? Ben Simmons, because I would want to learn how you can make $80 million and play 55 games. Teach me. Teach me how you can play play fifty five games in three seasons and we get thirty million, forty million, and get another forty million just by saying your back hurt. Get some nice uh, man up. I saw a meme that said yeah. he's the NBA representative of the McDonald's ice cream machine. Yes, is. Oh my yes. God. That was yeah. nice. moving right along. Yeah, you but who, that, uh, who would you buy it? It's a new movie coming out. Ocean like Luca, fifteen. Luca to how me, to rob the NBA? Luca to me is at the top of the. I would pay to watch him play. I would pay to watch Booker and Katie because you, if you watch the Suns, you're getting both of them. Mm. Those two, I, I still feel like they're gonna surprise people in the West. I'm telling you. Well, Katie's on a tear. As we're recording Shaq, this, he's watch. got seven straight games of 35 plus. It's the way four he's straight. He's it's never the done way that. He's doing it. Nobody is beating my vice president of the Big Man Alliance. It's not gonna happen. Jokic. Jokic. Yes, he's the vice president. Would you pay to go watch Jokic? I would. Yes, yeah, I, would. I, would I would too. too. I would. We need to fly down there and watch him play. Let's do it. Get him on the big podcast. Mm. You probably won't do it. Cause I, do it. No, because I saw there, Promise you'll only there. do it in Serbian. You'll so only. Only if the first 10 minutes is about horses. Didn't uh, our boy, Knuckleheads, asked him to be on you, podcast. He told me, no, yeah, I think. No, nah, we got to pull up on him, Shaq. Huh? Yeah, we got to pull up on him, Shaq. I don't, I don't like. That. Let's go Denver on fire. What's Let's go Denver. Julio. Ahmed. Oh, I, oh he's an Arab. Are you Arab? Oh, salam alaikum, brother. I apologize. I, I thought Sorry. you was Mexican. No. You got the this guy here. Okay, he been in LA bad. too long. No, no, he like him. Yeah, I thought he was Mexican. No, that's his job to get people. Like, I don't like asking people. Appreciate it. Um, so I need to go. Yes, you got to get uh, out of here. Do TNT. All right, we love. But you. I, I want to say this. Uh, it's it's been a blast to work with Jamal, and I want to give him his props. There, it's hard to come into a system 
and then fit right in and then make everyone bloom. And I want to say that all the listeners to the big podcast has now had two examples of how he can sit in the chair and then interview TI and then sit down today and make the content great. You're an amazing team player, but at the same point, when it's time for you to go, you have the bag and handles and with the microphone. And so I just want to say it's a it's an honor being your teammate, brother, and we really appreciate it's it. It's an honor being your teammate. And yeah, I hope it's our teammates. Yeah, but, mm-hmm. and I hope y'all and I hope y'all stick with me in the future. <laughs> uh, Jamal, you're the man. No, you are. For Shaquille O'Neal, for Jamal Crawford, I am Lefko. Thank you, as always, for watching The Big Pod. Yeah! about the Benjamins. I want some real Benjamins. You gave Benjamin O'Neal.